There's no safe like Simply Safe. This video is brought to you by Simply Safe. Can you build a four rotor using parts from two two rotors? This is truly the first step for committed. We've been talking about this for a while. He's busy, I'm busy, we've been doing our thing, and now it's starting to finally come together. And he sent me a list of things I need, and I was like, oh, that's a lot of stuff. So I figured I'd hit up my guys here at JDM California and just make it easy on us by getting two motors. I actually didn't know that you couldn't take the two motors and put them together. I thought oh, it was really? easy. I'm gonna learn a lot as yeah. we go along here. <laughs> Years ago, infamously, the parts that I had lost by UPS were actually the parts that are needed to turn this into a four rotor. So you have to have the E-shaft, as you know, and then you have to have the long bolts that go through the whole engine. More importantly is that two rotors have just two bearings, here and here. And then same thing here and here. You can't have these two bearings in the center of the motor. You have special irons, mm -hmm. which flip the way the bearings spin. Yep, so you have outer bearings, inner bearings, and then just a dummy plate in the very middle. These three pieces are specific to a four rotor that aren't on two two rotors. The biggest problem with four rotor is the way you have to get air into the ports because there are big ports and then there are small ports when you have a side port engine. So a lot of people actually skip it by just going full peripheral. Mm. Let me avoid all the actual technical issues. You can use more parts when you have a full peripheral engine, but you have more granular control of the engine when you stick with the stock ports. I thought you were gonna say the biggest issue with four rotors is me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I've committed to, but with this guy is I feel confident we can build a pretty damn good motor, but is it really capable of the abuse of drifting and his foot. My engines experience intense amount of heat and power at a burst, but he's going to be carrying a lot of that power over a longer period of time. So it's going to be a very heavy focus on cooling, flow, all of those sort of things that make this engine stay alive. What did he tell you in terms of these two engines? One of them was pretty low miles and he wasn't sure about the other one. First thing I noticed is that that's aluminum is generally associated with a 99 spec motor. The casting is different on this motor and this one. And so see this rubber mm -hmm. coupler? That's a 93 plus. Having the two engines being different series doesn't really matter. Can you make a four rotor from two, and in this case, three, two rotors? It's late night, things are gonna get crazy. I hope the answer is yes. I no, feel- no, I'm sorry, I need the answer <laughs> to be yes. <laughs> but that's why we got the third motor. And there's gonna be a little friendly competition, kind of like a storage wars type of thing. How much value did we get out of block A, B, and C? The rotors, are they damaged? Are they, how do they weigh? You know, all the side seals. We're trying to salvage everything that costs a lot of money. Coolant seals are out the window, those don't matter. Hurt, you get first pick. <laughs> well, you see these hands. They're really soft. This one looks like it's designed for his bad boys right here. <laughs> All right. I have the highest hope for this one myself. Ethan, which which one do you? No, I'm stuck with the one that was dropped. Oh, this is bent. The front cover snapped. The front pulley. <laughs> There's a, a quarter of it. So your timing's gonna be a little off. Oil metering pumps all trashed. I got my work cut out for me. So I am engine C. Hurt is A. Ethan is B is in Bravo. And this engine does look a little rough. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. So this is all you need to take uh, part of? Yeah, I've for the longest time wanted to do something where you get a toolkit and it's deep socket 10, 12, 14, 17 if you're feeling spicy. I'm about to take this bad boy to pound town. I usually just watch this part. You know, this is kind of messed up. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna take these motors apart together. They're lollygagging. They're not even doing <laughs> Rob didn't say I was doing this. We're gonna vibe out. All right. <laughs> I want to shoot some beginning uh, four rotor stuff, you know, before you go. I told her we're shooting establishing shots. I just yeah. didn't say what we were establishing. Establish this, <laughs> all right? You said we don't need a lot of this stuff, so I can just rip this off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! This, that's a ground. That's a ground. <laughs> For the last several years, I have trusted Simply Safe to take care of myself, my home, and even my shop here. You can buy pre configured systems or you can even add on as you go. It is incredible how comprehensive it is for how simple it is, even including setting up new things. Take your phone, put it in front of a camera, it has a little QR code, and you add a camera within a matter of seconds. They have live guard monitoring, which is wonderful. If something bad were to happen, they have people that watch the cameras that you want them to watch and can help dispatch authorities. As a customer, when you call their support, 
they are wonderful. I made a quick mistake and set up a base station that wasn't supposed to be set up, called them and they got me sorted out within less than two minutes. Not only is it cool that they have all these features for sale, but they actually back it up with great support. It's all the way from start to finish. It is so comprehensive that I even was saying to the guys that we probably should add a fire or smoke detector in the shop and then realized, oh wait, we already have one. Whether it is motion sensing, water level sensing, like a flood, glass break sensing, intrusion, you've got your panic system, you've got the main little keypad, you've got your base station, all the cameras, and the best part is you can save 50% off of your system and get your first month free when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring at simplysafe.com slash robdom. That's simplysafe.com slash robdom. While these two guys are doing whatever they're doing, I'm gonna try disassembling the engine slightly different than I normally do and see if it gives me any sort of advantage. While Hertz afraid of the oil, I'm going to bathe in it. Oh. Oh. It's a is that stage fright, stage fright. I wasn't just bored, I need to take my brush. Oh no, Hertz here. I'm just a little nervous, that's all. You got it this time. Don't worry, take your time. You know, I'll catch every video you make. <laughs> No, we're way more serious. <laughs> this isn't my motor. This is probably all of your viewers' dreams right here. It's 11 p.m. and we're just starting a project in the garage. It, it really is. And this is the roots of what we are all about. Can you make it happen? Having fun, dicking around. At the end of the day, what got you into cars? And that's this. What was the first mod you ever did on a car? I bought a glass pack cherry bomb pipe from AutoZone, the wrong diameter. It was a quarter inch too big. I crushed it to fit on my Pontiac Sunbird. My second mod, I tried turbocharging the car. <laughs> yeah. Sunfire? There was a version that came out with a turbo. I found out what turbos were, had a massive heart on. I bought it off of a junkyard. My dad yelled at me because I was taking up his garage. Thank God he stopped me. You've been a psychopath your entire life. <laughs> and the door's right there. I have, like, I have yeah, you time. Can make it. I have time. Yeah. <laughs> you can cut bait. But here we are. Here's my little secret. I'm going to disassemble the motor from the inside out. What? <laughs> No idea what the, how an engine would come apart like this. What are you doing? <laughs> Rob would be out right now. <laughs> I'm full mask right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you why. <laughs> There's like two bolts down there you can probably take out. You know, if you know so much about this. <laughs> he doesn't. Fucking come and do it, pal. This is a shit motor, so it's already all leaked out. <laughs> I mean, if you ask the right person, they're all shit motors. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. What the shit is this centric shaft nut? You have a socket for this? Nope. How'd you take yours off? These hands. With your bare hands? You have bare hands? That's a beast. Yeah. Is that what people use? Like, why did you? Diesel taxes. Jeez. This hurts. Give me a little bit of attitude right now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish oh, this no. <laughs> That's what they do at a Jiffy Lube, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit more than that. So after you win, I can stop, right? You're not gonna wanna know what third place gets. <laughs> oh, oh. This is a new one for me. Ooh. Get an eight. Get an eight. You don't have 
This is not normally part of our process. The wobble bolt. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That's if this if we were trying to rebuild this, look at that. Oh my god. Oh, that's the oil. Yeah, pump. that's why I was like, what the heck? That's gone. So this front iron is gone, gone. Whoa. All these seals are flattened. It's been through shit. <laughs> Obviously it was a gasoline motor. Here's one of the things that I care most for. This just saved him whatever, $150? You guys should see the fucking list. The list I sent him, and I'll show you on the screen here, is just parts. No labor, just the parts needed for four rotors. We're in this together. Fingers crossed. Are we? You're leaving me. You're gonna go cross country and block my number. I'm not gonna block your number. I'm leaving you because you like alone time with these things. Yes. Whatever you do with your alone time is, is yeah. on you, but. Let's just say we no longer use Vaseline to pack our rotors. I don't know why my seals are so gunky. Been using that new Dom Racing. My premix. <laughs> <laughs> my seal's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling the other engines are going to be better than this one, but the chrome on this is much more consistently worn. There is the telltale sign of like the, the nib on the, the apex seal. Normally that'll wear off like a whole edge. I've ran worse. We just have to make sure they're not bowed. Our goal here is housings, rotors, and rotor parts. How did you do that? It's trying to hold me back, but I won't let it. I've almost got this off, but everything in the front is just absolute trash. So even if we were saving this for like a race two rotor, three rotor, whatever, this counterweight's trashed. Everything's really damaged. So that's why you see me going above and beyond. Hear me out. <laughs> do we tell them? We tried that. <laughs> Torqued it halfway, it snapped off inside oh, of the motor. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> no one makes me work on my own shit, all right, pal? <laughs> you'll appreciate it. <laughs> Will I? No. You sure about you that? You'll question all the time spent. You know, my favorite part about this whole build process is as soon as the motor blows, I'm gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> is that your favorite part? <laughs> I'm a baby, huh? Yeah. I don't have any apex heels. I'm a baby. That front iron is trash. This rotor looks in much better shape than the previous one. It's still got a little bit of spring to it. Side seals, corner seals, they all look in great shape here. We've got the beginning of money being saved right here. This is in honor of Halloween that he and I will be at SEMA for. So we're opening up these pumpkins and hopefully carving them out. That, that looks pretty damn good. You know, November 1st is my birthday as well. Is it really? Mm -hmm. We yeah. should have waited. <laughs> hey, here, come over real quick for a birthday oops, surprise. Oops, I dropped something. That is a very good sign that shit's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, because it's not stuck. Is that so, the bolt that I dropped from there? Yeah, that was. A little bit more wear there than my motor, oddly enough. Ooh, this is good. This is really good. Now, this has nothing to do with your motor, but this plate could have another life. These plates are actually very lightly used. There's a little bit of a divot here at the bummer. So that would disqualify this one. You can see that right here. Interesting, we'll have to look at the apex seals. It took something in. Could you run this? Yes. Would you want to waste your time doing that? No. Back to my rough motor. What do we got? Really nasty fuel, oil blow by, but I think we got another clean housing. What you're looking for mostly, you want this area sealed as much as possible. So you got a little bit of the, what they call devil's nail marks, chatter there, that doesn't bother me. Up until the exhaust, that you wanna have as much of a sealing surface as possible. It looks like around the exhaust port there's a little bit, but this is dirty, but perfectly usable housing. The trashed motor actually had good parts. Wow, so you're the last place. I mean, am I? Cause I got half my motor taken apart. <laughs> These guys are professionals, all right? I'm just the guy who walked in from the street. To be honest, this is my first time oh, taking now. a part of okay, two Show off. Show off. Now, all of a sudden, it's everyone's first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time. <laughs> Technically, I'm winning because it's my first time and I'm going a lot longer. I could last a lot longer. <laughs> it's just Friday, I'm, I'm exhausted. Well, the way that the wind is blowing. <laughs> it's got a sore throat. You want to inspect Ethan's 
plate? Yeah, I do actually. Engine looks good. The disassembly looks like trash. Ethan's motor has the iconic issue that I, it makes me sad is, see that lip right there? Oh. That's that corner of the apex seal leaking compression at this point. These are a little bit more worn than mine are. This motor may have been ran longer. The step wear kind of says that too. It's a little bit of a hit right here. It's all flattened. But because this side is not, we can get these out. That's an excellent rotor. This one's got a massive, massive gouge right there. So that makes me wonder. Same thing on this rotor. That corner is flat. It's a chunk of metal. Look at that. Something got into this motor or broke off of this motor. Is that what I think it is? It is. Whoa. It broke the top half of this right there and then it snapped. You can see this edge right here. It fell out. I'd be okay with just this. I'd be okay with maybe just that. But yeah, that, that apex seal broke a, a part of it off. So this rotor is not the ideal one. It all comes down to this. I think we have three really good rotors, guaranteed rotors. So no fucking pressure, all right, bro? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to perform in front of an audience now. Oh, this is looking good. Okay, okay. Oh, there's, oh, there's a little bit of damage. The rotor did hit. Yeah, there's. it looks like a dent at the t that yeah. corner, no? Yeah, there's a, a corner dent. Backup plan, this one would work just fine. This is a success. It's the journey along the way. I had more fun just doing this, and the byproduct is there is enough here to make a four rotor. A great thousand horsepower four rotor is hidden within this sea of trash. It is possible. It took three motors and just almost wasn't enough to make enough parts for a used four rotor. That said, Hertz gonna go ahead and clean all this up. <laughs> I'm gonna go play Apex Legends. <laughs> the tally is in. Which engines do you think had what? Oh, you saw how clean Hertz was, you saw how broken mine was, and you saw how methodical Ethan was. The results? will surprise you. Ethan's engine, unfortunately, experienced some sort of detonation. So we had both one rotor and one housing completely gone. It was an apex seal that broke in half. That's gone. We have one housing and one rotor that is absolutely caked. This is our only hope out of this motor, this and this. This is all the parts, oil control rings and whatnot. Looks like some usable things. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, I am not reusing 99% of these springs. I refuse to do it. Every single one of these engines had pinched side seals. So that little zigzaggy limp noodle looking thing, gonna flatten. It's already been flattened multiple times and it sat like that for years. This is my engine. Massive surprise, the most destroyed engine in here has the most bearing of fruit. We have two housings that uh, have the devil's teeth marks, nail marks, whatever you wanna say, but those buff out, they're very subtle, and that's just the old school apex seals doing that with the way that it was lubricated. Those two rotors are our best chance right there. Sadly, it hurts clean motor, which has a lot of great parts for a two rotor, has very few for a four rotor. And this puts us at that like, ooh, this is gonna get a little uncomfortable. We have one rotor completely destroyed, one housing completely destroyed. There was another detonation in that engine. We have one housing, got the corners of the chrome wearing down, but otherwise it's okay. And then the same thing with this rotor right here. This is currently the only way to make this engine work a four rotor from three two rotors, it's got this nasty gouge right here. You take as much of the burr, as much of the edge off of that, and that's the only way we can run it. I'm committed to the cause, but knowing that this has compromised that surface, you certainly wouldn't want to try and make peak horsepower with this. What we're going to do in the beginning of the next video is do that beautiful montage, cleaning up all these rotors, weighing them when they're all oilless, and seeing just what we have to start with. Can you build a four rotor from multiple two rotors? Well, the handful of parts we wanted, just the housings and the rotors, unfortunately almost barely didn't make it when we bought three two rotors, so six rotors of stuff, we barely have four. So can it be done? Yes. It's honestly pretty expensive to do it nowadays that way. Unfortunately, Mazda makes it expensive to do it the other way, but we're gonna push forward and I do see a glimmer of hope of being able to put this engine together for a lot less than any of my four rotors.